You can jump to 5.11 for the shoulder strap demo, uh, 6.40 for the high score demo, 13.21 for the high score result, or 13.38 for the shotgun demo. Okay, so this is the actual controller. It's the Vive controllers just slot straight in the top. They just drop in and they self-center. It's a fully adjustable design, so you can basically pull the stock in and out. You can elevate it, you can, you can raise it up or down, and also you can adjust the angle of the actual cheek rest. Um, which is quite important that because if you change the stock in any way your cheek if it's not aligned with the line of sight of the rifle um, it's quite uncomfortable so uh, they all tighten up with wing nuts so you loosen them off and then adjust it and then tighten them up so it takes a couple of seconds to do you can also change the foregrip you can have different settings because obviously games are all going to vary so it's important to have fully adjustable foregrip um, you could also tighten up those, the clamps on it so you can actually do it without the little pin, but uh, this allows for another function which you'll see later on. So that only needs one pin and that holds it, that locks it in. Okay, a really important point is the buttons. You've got to be able to use the full controller buttons and a lot of people don't realise that when they're talking about all these peripherals coming out in future, but you're going to need the full Vive controllers at your fingertips and this actually allows for that. You can press everything, even the little grip buttons. Um, and it's no occlusion there at all. You know, it's, it works really well actually. You know, you can use both, obviously both controllers if you need to. And um, you can change your hands when you're using it as well. You can also tighten these up. So what you see me doing now is just tightening that and basically you can lock those controllers in the actual grip. So uh, once you've got them done up really tight, you can just turn it upside down and, uh, and they really are clamped in there so that's it's really handy when you're using it you know um, you could keep i tend to keep the front one loose and the back one tight so then it, um, i can change magazines with the m4 i did experiment for a lot of different designs and this was the best design actually i experimented with ones oh sorry the cat's just about to uh, <laughs> jump off the top of the tv oh devon rex I experimented with a lot of different designs and I found that occlusion was a big problem and also the controllers are quite weak, quite creaky plastic. So I'll just show you one of the designs that I use now. Yeah, I'm just going to get it now. I used MDF to make the stock and I had these kind of light fittings which screwed into the actual Vive um, controllers and then with magnets it quick, quick attached. But it was really creaky, even though it was quite lightweight, uh, the controllers, they didn't feel comfortable at all holding that weight and they were occluded by the MDF and it turned to lose tracking and it was a terrible, actually terrible idea. So um, this idea was the best one I had when you plug it in from the bottom. It's comfortable because you can hold it with your fingertips. You support the whole weight with your fingertips, uh, so it's, it's quite easy to, to get hold of. Cheek rest is quite, it is HMD friendly. Obviously you can't have an ordinary cheek rest because you, your view is blocked by this big bulky headset. Oh, the front there, you can change that to a pump action. I've noticed a few games are coming out. I think hot dogs, uh, horseshoes and hand grenades have just introduced pump actions, so that was important. <laughs> you can take the pin out and use that. It's quite stiff as well. You can adjust the setting of it, the, st the stiffness of it with the bands, uh, but it's it's reasonably good there um, and it stays upright as well. So you don't need that little pin in if you don't need to. Um, so that's pretty good. I put in a sling attachment actually because a lot of the time you don't want to have the rifle the whole time. So it's a single point sling and you can wear that and then you can basically just drop that whole the whole, the whole stock and then take the controllers out, which I'll show you a bit later. Uh, here's the two point system. So basically, as long as you've got one hand on it and your shoulder, it doesn't matter which hand, it's, it stays very secure. Or you can use two hands, obviously, without your shoulder. But I'm just going to demonstrate that now. So you could, you could take out the front controller and it's still steady and you can take out the back one and it remains um, firm in your grip there. So that's quite good. You can manipulate it one-handed, which is which is quite important, I think, for a rifle. All right. Also, you can break it down. So, um, if you want to store it or anything like that, you can basically slot that front section off. And this is the thing: you don't even need that front section. You can actually get a rifle. Or you can just use the the rifle grip, the, you know, the uh, pistol grip with the stock. And you don't actually need that pump action, um, the foregrip. I prefer to use it because it's 
you can steady your shots uh, in some games or simulators you can press the trigger maybe to grip the front grip but this works just as well as well for, for plinking it stays really steady and obviously you've got storage for the front controller there as well okay this is me actually using the stock demonstrating it the sling there basically it all hangs down quite nicely off your off your shoulder really you can keep one hand on it you can adjust it for different height uh, different body sizes but it's quite quick to sort of take up and it hangs quite quite neutral it's quite nice so you can pull it into your shoulder uh, i haven't demonstrated the hmd there but you can see uh it was two point system again as long as i've got my shoulder and my hand on the, the front grip's very easy to change your mags also you'll notice the slightly uh, slight angle there so you can fit magazines in because if it's straight across you can't actually put the magazines in under controllers so it's quite important there you go i've just taken those controllers out and it's dropped down um, so if you need to switch to a pistol you can do that and then you can you can find it on the side of your body and plug it back in if you need to uh, change the rifle also in some games you might have a rifle and a pistol so you could leave the right controller plugged in for your rifle and maybe use your left one for uh, the pistol i'm just demonstrating taking it out now right so basically you could if i tighten up this back controller there that should stay locked in and for something like hot dogs uh, horseshoes and hand grenades you can you could use the m4 on the range and then when you finish with it you can drop it down and then with your other hand you could grab a pistol and shoot some targets uh, maybe if it's a mixed range so there we go so it just adds a bit more flexibility Okay, this is a personal challenge for me. I thought last night I'll uh, go into um, it's rain in the shooting range in hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, and I'll I'll choose one that I've never done before. So they've updated it recently, and I haven't actually tried the rifle ranges at all. So I thought, well, proof of, proof of concept. I'm going to put the rifle in, and I'm going to have a go and see how well I do. Now I know previously I've done really, really well in the rifle ones, and, and no one's been able to get close to my score. So I thought I'd be okay. Um, hand on my heart, I did actually try uh, range 9 I think and the targets came in from all different directions and I didn't do as well uh, because it's a new shooting style. This is a bit more um, a bit more what I was used to in the previous one so I thought I'd give this a go. It's uh, my first ever attempt and uh, I've got no idea what the patterns are like or what the timing's like and it's just to, just to show you basically um, just from the get-go I'm you know I'm given a new a new course and attempt here and it's uh, the first time I've ever seen it and you'll see how I perform now, and it's, I'm, I'm really pleased with the, the way the controller works. It's Honestly, it feels like me shooting my uh, Smith & Wesson 1522 um, when I used to shoot here in the UK. Um, because it's an M4 style design, obviously this feels just like it anyway, apart from the kick. Um, but my 2.2 hardly kicked anyway, so it's, it's basically felt just like this. But it's, I'm really, really pleased with that uh, simulator. Um, hot dogs or she's and hand grenades it honestly feels just like shooting for me uh, with this stock and um i'd encourage anyone that's anyone that fancies getting into getting into shooting and um, pick up this if you've got a vive pick up this game because this simulator because it's um a really nice introduction into shooting so i'm just looking through these targets it's six of 20 i think it does go on a little while now unfortunately at the end the, the camera runs out of battery but it does carry on recording the actual footage of the game um but you'll just see me trying to line this up now. I probably should have used the red dot sight for this, but uh, obviously it's the first time in this range, so um, I'm using the iron sights. I haven't got them configured. Um, I think it's one click up on the rear sight, so I haven't I haven't actually zeroed it into to the different ranges. Um, so I'm not really sure where to aim. I'm just aiming dead center as best I can. I panic a bit here because I'm not sure how long I've got. It's the first time I've seen this course. Um, I realize I've got a bit more time there. Now, what you'll notice is with the front, with the foregrip, um, sometimes I'll pull that trigger on the front grip and it steadies the shot. Um, so if you want to do long range sniping, you can do that. And it basically, it, it really does, it kind of smooths your control so, so you've got more accuracy. But if you want it lively in your hand, you basically um, leave the grip in, but you don't press the button. And it basically, it's, um, you can really move the rifle around quick and it's much more responsive. So it feels more natural shooting. So I'm really impressed with this new range. It's a bit more, it's a bit faster than the previous one. But I got quite a high score on the previous one and I'm sure people are wondering how I did it. Um, but obviously now you can see using this controller, it's, it, it's just like, it just feels so natural shooting. 
Um, oops, I missed a few there. Luckily, you can see with the design, there's a bit of a, um, it's a bit of an angle there, and it allows for you to change magazines quite quick. And I think I messed this one up. I get these, and then I change magazines, thinking the round's over. Yeah, so I missed out on loads of targets there. Never mind. I was quite nervous because obviously it's it's me trying to test myself on how good this stock is. So I'm wanting to do quite well for you guys just to show you, <laughs> just to show you what it was like. Um, because obviously I could have spent hours practicing this, but honestly, hand on my heart, this is the first time I've ever seen it, and um, it was just to demonstrate how pointy the rifle is with that stock. I'm looking forward to trying this range with the red dot. I do love this M4, it's beautiful. So we've got a few more left. I think in a minute the um, the video cuts out, but you'll just see me finish it off. And I get a really good score for it, actually, I'm quite pleased. It's, um, I did, did quite well. Even though I missed quite a lot of targets, you know, because um, I'm not used to the cycle. Yeah, I was quite nervous. I um, obviously the previous attempt was on the I think it was range nine, which was the storm. I think they call it storm range, um, which is quite tough because they the targets are doing crazy things like they're spinning in the centre and crossing over, and it was all stuff I've never really shot before. So uh, I thought I'd give this one a bash because uh, you know um, hopefully it was going to be a bit more like what I was used to. I think I used the front grip for this, yeah. You, oh, there it's gone there. Yeah. Just to smooth it down, because they're a little bit steady as aim at. So we're getting close to the end. We've got two more rounds left. One of the nice things about the, the design as well is the um, the very bottom of the rest lines up just about with the magazine. So if you if you bitch hip when you fire, if you kind of rest your your, your front arm, your, your front um, elbow on your hip, you can you can be really accurate with lightweight rifles, and it's perfect for this. So you can um, even just with one hand on the on the on the grip, you can be quite accurate. They say it's a bad style. I mean, the military laugh at anyone that sort of bitch hips when they shoot. But it's, um, I think, because more powerful rifles, it will kick you off balance. But for lightweight two twos and that, you know, you can get away with it. I used to do it because I used to shoot a lot of air rifles, and it's um, obviously a kick isn't a problem. But it was a nice little range. This. I think we're nearly there. There we go. So there's my score, and there it is, if you have a look at that, it wasn't, it wasn't on there before. And a previous high score was 16, 1,600, and that was 1,957 with the first attempt. So I was really pleased with that. And that's how I do it, with that. So, hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades got around to include in shotguns today, and I'm really happy about that. So I basically made a little video showing off how my peripheral works with that as well. Uh, in the little video you can see me just setting up the grips now. Now I want to lock the front grip in, the one that's furthest away from you because that's the one that's uh, going to stay in all the time while I'm uh, feeding rounds into the chamber with my the grip that's closest to my face. So you can just see me tightening that up and that basically locks it in place there. So it's a bit harder to remove and it's, it stops it shaking about. I made a modification to the design today. I increased the slide uh, distance on the pump action this is to compensate for the slightly wider grip on the on the shotgun in game. This might get a, might get changed at a later date in game. They might actually move the grip a little bit closer. Um, at the moment, you c it's quite a stretch to use it. But I thought, well, if I'm going to ship this peripheral, then at least it can cater for all kinds in future as well. So it's about as wide as you can get. So I don't think it will need to be longer than that. So it's worth giving people the options at a later date. You know, in case one does come out with a slightly wider grip again. 
the shotgun front grip has has to have the trigger pulled so you can it frees up the slide so you can rack lock and load the shotgun that's a bit of a problem because you've got to press that trigger the whole time and it can be awkward actually uh, sliding the action back and forwards it creates torque on the actual hand controller and it's uh, it can make it a little bit sticky to sort of pump backwards and forwards so what I've done is I, I used a band um, one of the one of the tube bands so I've actually used that and you can just roll it down and it basically keeps that trigger pressed so that's kind of my own little mod for it now I mean the, the people the developers of this of this simulator might actually implement this whole system later on but you can't rely on that so I think I'm going to ship these little bands with, with these controllers so you know people can have the option to do it themselves if they want to you'll see me holding the shotgun that, that front slide on the bottom and it actually it frees it up quite nicely and it feels like a proper pump action I've never actually used one with a pistol grip on the front so I don't know what that feels like but that feels pretty realistic like that now I'm going to show you that pistol grip if you if you grip it like a pistol in the front you can do it there is a bit of a knack to it there is a bit of a technique because as I say you do generate torque when you when you're further away from the actual slide and it can get a bit sticky so you need to twist the grip in the right direction as you're pulling it back and then reverse that direction as you push it forward it sounds awkward but it's something you'd, you'd probably want to get used to if you're going to use the shotgun with that front grip like that I just wanted to demonstrate that you can do it but I actually prefer holding it underneath like a you know like the actual shotgun in game where it's a proper slide rather than the pistol grip you're holding it slightly lower than in game but you don't really notice because how the orientation is with the actual shotgun in your sight picture you don't really notice where your hands are for that front grip now the way the developers have made this you can actually t turn the, the, the rifle in that front grip without actually moving the front grip so it's really handy when you're reloading I don't think you can slam fire this shotgun, I'm not sure. I think the slam fire and you can actually get it to fire the instant you rack it forward now. You probably can, maybe there's some skilled shooters out there that can do it, I don't know. I've I've never I've never shot um practical shotgun in the UK or anything like that. So if there's any practical shotgunners out there, I'm sure they can give us some good tips. And I've got a lot of respect for those guys, because I tell you what, <laughs> after using that shotgun for five minutes your arms really hurt. And this People probably don't realise that you, it's quite physical actually when you're doing this, and it's with that controller especially um, when you're sliding that grip forwards and backwards. And that I've I've weighed the actual rifle with the peripheral in it and the controllers. It's about two and a half pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's it does add up, I suppose. It's quite nice to use the peripheral with the shotgun actually. It's the first time I've used it as well, so you guys are basically seeing what I've just messed around with like the last few hours. I think I prefer the M4 uh, because I like assault rifles and I've actually owned an M4 type of rifle before, a 1522 uh, Smith & Wesson and that feels more natural to me. Um, I think also the way you manipulate the shotgun here is a little bit false because you're not actually grabbing it the same but with the M4 it's kind of, um, you don't really manipulate anything, it's just in front of you and it feels very natural reloading it. It does feel quite floaty when you're moving it around, I think it's just the smoothing they've got in with the front grip and the back grip. So it's, it's not quite as pointy as I'd like, to, uh, to be honest, it's a little bit floaty, but I don't think that can be got around, I think that's just part of the game mechanic. Well that's it for the demonstrations, if you're interested in buying one you can get the eBay link in the description below. They're all handmade by me in the UK, uh, I'm a, I've got a degree in engineering years ago so I'm not, it's not something that's been knocked together in five minutes, so I've built it quite solid and it should last. Um, you know, it's, um, I don't want anything that's going to break on somebody in a, in a few days. They are handmade though, so don't expect the precision that you'd get from you know buying something off the shelf. It's just a, a project of mine just to make these. Uh, if you're interested, I say just you know go ahead. You can pick one up. Um, if not, just try and make your own. It's it's worth trying to make your own anyway because you can get it exactly what you want. Ideally, I'd like to make a rifle one and a separate shotgun, but I think for now this is the best peripheral that fits every everyone you know everyone can use this for all types of games i think that's the best uh, happy hunting <laughs>